Hello, Generals. We're back again with Ultimate General Civil War with our Union Major General Let's Play. We're taking a look at the army post the Battle of Malvern Hill, and I'm preparing the force for uh, a little skirmish. Uh, Kettle Run, I think? Yeah, Kettle Run. Um, so we're going to take this this block of troops here, but I'll get to the other changes to the army otherwise. Uh, actually, there aren't really all that many changes um, post Malvern Hill. I am down... One brigade um, from uh, that, that line infantry unit that shattered uh, in the battle. Otherwise, I've done some reorganization uh, in prepping for um, Kettle Run and then also pulling a bunch of generals out of units and people that got promoted, basically. So uh, division commanders got reorganized. I put George McClellan in command of I Corps uh, and then myself in command of II Corps as I am barely a better general than Ulysses Grant. Um, but I'll probably end up dumping Grant in two core, uh, for a second bull run. There's a great deal of maneuver that occurs in that battle. And then I'll have the avatar drop down to three core. Um, three core at the moment is a bunch of ballast units with basically just every spare major I've got. Um, or uh, one light colonel. Um, and that's because I wanted to put the other light colonel I had. These are all guys who look like they might, um, bump up to general maybe or no i guess they go to full colonel um yeah so they might bump to full bird in the course of the battle uh and then captain lily here is a little on the low end for, to be commanding this many skirmishers as is affecting the efficacy of the unit but uh i'm gonna see if i can't bump him to major and then we'll kind of take a look from there so this is uh second light foot and then we just got a smattering of kind of whatever infantry i've grabbed um uh, it's a mix of Harper's Ferries in the 1st Division. Harper's Ferries with the Rock of the Shiloh. So actually I'm going to bump them up there so that if any of these units do have to merge, they can all be Harper's Ferries units. Uh, and then 7th and 8th, just because they're the ones that I grabbed. There's not really any kind of rhyme or reason as far as that part's concerned. Uh, artillery has been shuffled around a bit. Um, what was 6 Field with a bunch of 12-pound Napoleons is now... Uh, six howitzer with uh, 24s after my experience at Malvern Hill. Um, the comment section below the Malvern Hill battle was actually uh, pretty lively. Um, and, and then, you know, I appreciate that level of interaction. So thanks very much. Uh, I made a big deal about the experiment of Malvern Hill. Like maybe the 24 pounder is, you know, not worth the expense. And really, I just walked away from that battle, like really convinced that the 24 pounder is totally worth the expense. So I've got four more in my cache, uh, and I could buy as many as 11 more. I'm probably, before second run, uh, bull run, going to spin up. I'm going to put the 24-pounders in another unit um, and do something with them, actually. Probably 8th eighth, eighth, eighth field will get redesignated as 8th howitzer. Um, first field, which is the unit that has all the experience, I gave them James's. Um, and... We'll see. Uh, this is supposed to be kind of a poor man's 20-pound howitzer or 20-pound parrot. So we'll be using them for counter-battery and then also uh, general support. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, there's a lot of experimentations to be had here. So let's take a look at the overall situation on the ground. Uh, army numbers are largely unchanged for the Union Army in this situation. Still roughly 23,000. Um, and then obviously a number of folks down here just kind of milling about but this unit these units are all ballast although three core will be converted into a full combat unit um in time for the second bull run let's take a look at what we're trying to get uh second bull run you have to field at least two cores so we're going to be doing that and you can bring uh two other cores so we're probably gonna be bringing the three core in the main army slot probably because uh, I don't want to wait for the rear guard stuff. That's just kind of my thought process there. Uh, so there's going to be just a lot of units generated, and I'm 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 probably just going to go into second bull run cold <clears throat> with a lot of these units. They're going to be fresh, green, inexperienced, blah blah blah, all that stuff. Um, you know, as much as I think I'd like to get a, get a major out of the deal, they don't have a star either, and their efficiency is garbage. Let's. you yeah you know yeah much better so there's a huge jump there all right cool so we'll get maybe a light current on the deal um 
so there's that's what we're looking for for second bull run. The enemy army currently hangs out somewhere in the vicinity of let's call it fifty one thousand. Uh, so it's a little larger than double me. Um, a lot of two star units, I'm guessing. And based on our experience at Malvern Hill, we should expect to be seeing more Lorenzes and Enfields probably uh, in the Confederate army, which uh, I'm very happy about. Uh, it's, uh, weapons I can capture. I'm happy to use um, captured weapons, especially as we push into 1863. Uh, I, and and that partially that's because that's my intention to raise a couple of historical units. Um, so uh, I guess it's not super relevant to the game, but screw it, whatever. Uh, I have family that, came straight off the boat in New York, went over to Ohio, and then they joined the Ohio Infantry, uh, fought at Shiloh, and then kind of just down the Mississippi campaign down to Vicksburg. They were POW for a bit. So I'll be generating a brigade that represents um, the 34th Volunteer Ohio, Ohio Volunteer Infantry. And then also as we push into 1863, I'll be generating a brigade that represents uh, the 54th Massachusetts and the other um uh, African American soldiers who formed a couple, you know, hundred, uh, if Wikipedia is to be believed, although well, that's kind of a source that I wouldn't put a lot of stock, stock into. So, you know, at least the 54th Massachusetts, uh, and the other ones, and they all had Enfields, um, at least the Massachusetts did. And, uh, some of the other units. So I'll be using that to sort of a historical throwback unit, that kind of thing. So let's take a look at Kettle Run, and then we'll take a look at Through Fair Gap as just sort of an idea where we're headed before we jump into uh, the Kettle Run, or the, the, the fight. Um, Kettle Run's a short, sharp combat. You have a very limited portion of the map. Uh, cuts off like here, basically, is what you're playing with. So none of this is all here. You don't have all this stuff out there. You have a very small bit of the battlefield to play with, and probably my guess is there's sort of a Confederate blocking force that's trying to block this bridge is what I would imagine is happening. Um, and uh, we're going to send the first two divisions of i Corps into that engagement. Um, and then it's been eons since I've played through Fair Gap. Uh, so what is it? It's a big battle, probably? No. Oh, I remember this one. Uh, amusingly, actually, the inverse of this fight's a Confederate mission, too. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll prepare the army for that. It's a different video, obviously, but um, this is a great defensive fight, and you get this weird random spoiling attack up here that doesn't make any sense, but, you know, hey, whatever. I'll be ready for it. Um, but yeah, without uh, further ado, why don't we go ahead and jump in... Uh, let's talk about army development strategy as well. So short of the fresh units that are going to make up the, the core, the heart of three core. And I don't really have a goal. I don't have a goal for number of brigades I'm shooting for. I'd like to get, you know, all three divisions fully staffed or all three core fully staffed, but I we will see. I'm not really sure about that. Um, general divisional model for me is line infantry, line infantry, line infantry, specialized unit artillery. Um, and the specialized unit could be cavalry or could be skirmishers, you know, we'll see. Um, however, depending on how some of these battles shake out, it might be better to have, um, specialized units all in their own unit. So all the skirmishers would go here and all the cavalry would go here or something. And then the first two divisions are line infantry with attached artillery being at the end of each division, or I don't know, like, I, I'm not sure if it's better to have a more balanced organization like that, or if it's better to have concentrated um, organization like that. But the goal here is to get some experience for some of these units, especially 4th Infantry and uh, where they go, 2nd Light Foot. Um, this is not a battle where you want to bring artillery. Uh, and it's just because the the combat moves so fast that, that you just can't. Um, so... I'm not going to have anywhere near 13,000 soldiers. Uh, so this is going to be big units and my ballast units are pulling their numbers down, but probably not, you know, that much. So, uh, kettle runs an interesting fight. I'm, I'm a little nervous about not bringing cannon, but I think this is one of those battles where it moves too quickly for you to really get a lot of good work out of cannon. Um, let's click this. So it is actually kind of a three dimensional map, which is super, super nifty. Um, the elevation here gives you great cover to advance. And then if you can claim kind of this sector of the map, essentially, when you do advance, 
I, I mean, like, if we when you do advance, uh, the high ground's yours, you know. And once once that's the case, the Confederates have no choice but to give ground. Um, typically, the main engagement occurs generally in this region. Um, and at this point, you're up here. Let's take a look at Dan. So at this point, you're up here, you know, uh, occupying, say, this position, and you're shooting down, and it's it's just a good time. It's a, it's a good time to be a Union soldier, let's put it that way. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and advance using this um, ridge to provide defile. All right, uh, so pause issue initial orders. Um, I uh, have a big swarm of skirmishers. Uh, you know what, let's go ahead and get second division's units to spit out a bunch of skirmishers too. I just want a shitload of them. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Go join the swarm. For the horde of skirmishers. Uh, so there's... I would say pretty good odds that, yeah, pretty good odds I'm going to run into big skirmisher units, I think. And so if that's the case, my best bet is morale shock, not, um, my best bet's morale shock, not, you know, kills. So uh, morale shock by way of hitting them from multiple sides versus kills. Uh, man, that's beautiful. I really, really wish that there was some formation command where I could be like, hey, take the double line. All right, sorry. That's just me me bitching. All right, so back to normal time as we're getting closer and closer to the main engagement line. We get first division to take up position here. And then the back three take up position here. And then these cats are going to establish what amounts to our front line. Essentially, I'm going to use them to extend the front line or establish the front line and then let these dudes essentially advance and cover, uh, by which I mean behind the skirmishers. And, you know, come to think of it, I imagine that's pretty close to what skirmishers did historically. Establish where the line of contact was and then, you know, the army could maneuver with some degree of impunity behind it. Why are you so much faster than the rest of these guys? Is it because they're all bunched up? I mean, not really. They're they're not bunched up. They also don't have as much stamina. Eh, I don't know. Why are these guys all bunched up? I mean, they, these two make sense, but everybody else should be, you know, whatever. Okay, so I'm I'm a little shocked that we've not yet made contact. Uh, I imagine that's coming. Mm. What? I guess I just didn't click him. That's my fault. Oh shit. Uh, okay. Big unit. Four no eighteen. Just shy 1850. Good gravy. All right. So four, three, and five, three, four, five ends up becoming. What? No, don't be dumb. Just do the thing. Now, also, their skirmishers uh, will establish the front line and uh, one, eight, and seven will push out. I eventually want my line of advance to be about here-ish and then push down this way. Uh, we'll get McClellan and we'll get the supply somewhere safe. All right, so for a little bit, I'm going to have this on. Uh, what is this? Quarter speed. Oh, there's the skirmishers. All right. Okay. Actually, no. You are needed over here. 
You guys can handle him. Well then move. If you're blocked. Alright. Back to full time. It looks like Forno's decided discretion's about a part of Valor, which I can sympathize with. Yeah. Get out of here, skirmishers. Tired of your shit. All right, great. Good job, skirms. They are going to be able to basically establish this as our new front line once they get into position. I love it. Doing great. And these guys are just going to get the F out. So, yeah. Either way, if they come to us, they've got skirmishers who can flow back outward and then infantry who can respond uh, and repulse. Or we establish this position and push them south. Either way, they're getting knocked back down, and that's the point I'm trying to get at. Uh, <clears throat> this is unfortunately one of the maps you need to be a little more proactive on. Uh, the timer does actually mean something. All right, here they come. And we'll see. This might be getting a little greedy, but we'll see. Oh, ho, 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 ho. You're good. You actually... All right. My lane of advance... Is I need to give me a second. Okay, so you guys are going to pivot with fourth as essentially the um, axis, and then we'll get five to provide supporting fire. McClellan, get there. If I can, this might be a pipe dream, we're going to get the skirmishers here to hit Latimer. Uh, Latimer, yeah. Big artillery unit. This is probably Napoleon's, but I'd actually like... I'd like to capture Napoleon's. Um, I think a Napoleon is a fine gun. If you wanted to get pedantic, it is in fact a fine gun howitzer. Uh, <laughs> I feel like that might be splitting hairs. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's going great. I presume Early's going to shoot? Or do we outrange him? All right, be careful of Trimble. Fall back, fall back, fall back, fall back. Ooh, that's good. All right. Yep, of course. Of course they take fire. Of course they take fire. Yeah, of course they do. All right. We need to seize the momentum, so to speak, and advance. Yeah. Everyone else is fine, but of course that unit just gets reamed. Yeah, that's fine. It is what it is. The skirmisher swarms doing their job, keeping Latimer morale shocked. To this, um, that gives me huge cachet to operate. Um, okay, that's right. They're on run. That's actually fine. You have an elevated position, I think. Eh, sort of. You got an elevated position. That's cool. Do the thing, buddy. Also, excellent, great work, guys. Push their flank, fall back. Yes, ah, oh, so good. So proud of the light, the light company commanders. They're all, I presume. This is about, this is actually, you know, for the Civil War, this is multiple companies. Um, I mean, on paper, this is right, this is about right for a company. But in the Civil War, you know, I mean, a company was like, 
like 30 dudes or something. Um, so this is probably the combined skirmish companies of all of the various regiments that make up these brigades. Drives me wild whenever I'm reading about the Civil War, the way the armies are organized. Because, I mean, the way that I think of a regiment is, is predominantly an administrative unit. Um, so I guess let's talk about real life. Like, I was in the army. Um, the uh, the uh, um the U.S. Army. I guess suppose my accent doesn't really. <laughs> it's not really a secret. And um, you know, like we've the way we organize armies is sort of evolved. Uh, and it looks very similar to uh, the rest of the world's schema, where the regiment is purely an administrative unit, and then the first, second, and third battalion, you know, actually go out and do things. And the battalions are organized into brigades, and that's all. You know, the brigade combat team is a concept that, if, if I'm not mistaken, came out of the Second World War. Uh, although at the time it was called a regimental combat team, but the general concepts. Uh, uh, continued largely unchanged. So that was fantastic. We took a volley from Forno, but a combination of um, the uh, elevation and the fact that we're far away and Forno's probably using probably shitty smoothbores or something. Um, didn't really take all that many losses. Just great. Although Latimer is shooting again, so we need to see if we can't get into position to prevent him from... Uh, doing that. Anyway, so I think of the primary maneuver element in a uh, brigade as as being a, a, a battalion. And that's that's generally accurate for the rest of the world. Um, and, and, you know, in, in this era, the regiment was the fighting unit. Um, and on paper... Uh, they actually had battalions. There, there's a couple of regiments that had multiple battalions, but for the most part, every regiment um, had one battalion, and that's it. Um, so uh, a lot of my data about this stuff comes from a book called by John Keegan, and it's just the American Civil War. It's just the Civil War, something like that. And um, John Keegan's this guy I learned about in college, and he's a professor at the... I don't think it's Sandhurst. I think it's the British Military Academy. Uh, but he's he's like an author of like the psychology and what goes through people's minds uh, in this era. Um, he talked about, you know, he talks about Waterloo. He talks about uh, the Crimean conflict. He talks about, you know, just this, this period and also a bit of uh, the North African campaign. And, and I think he also has a book uh, about the first world war that if that's a period that you find even remotely interesting, check his work out because I'd always thought of the First World War as kind of this very static and uninteresting conflict, and he just showed me I could not have been more wrong about that. Um, his book makes this war seem very vivid and, and alive, and I'm, I'm getting off topic about what's going on in the game, but yeah, John Keegan does some good work, and um, I don't know if he's still alive, um, but did or does some good work, and, and uh, I, I hear he has a pretty good Second World War history as well. Um, and perhaps it's because I'm American and perhaps it's because I was in the army, but I, I'm so tired of learning about the civil war, <laughs> which makes me a bad American or something. But you know, like I, I, I generally know, I know the broad strokes of the conflict and whatever, and I'm sure there's plenty of history I never learned about in school and, and all that, you know, the specific details and, you know, Lord knows I never learned in history class in high school about, um, you know, the Eastern front at all, like just it happened. That's about, that's about as far as I got. Uh, you know, I've taken history classes in college, and, and now I'm working on a business degree, so history doesn't really <laughs> doesn't really come into the equation at all. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm sure. He, I'm sure his history of the Second World War is fine. I'm just there's so much more interesting stuff to learn about in history than you know reading about D-Day for the nine thousandth time. Uh, not to disparage anything that happened during the D-Day campaign, but it's there's plenty of movies and whatnot, and there was like 400 games about it <laughs> when it, you know, like about three years, to, uh, not five years ago. All right, so uh, let's stop talking about history generally and start talking about the specifics of this particular battle. Um, the skirmisher horde on the 
Union right hook over here is doing its job. Um, second infantry is kind of, or second light foot's kind of having a rough go of it. Uh, they just haven't had the chance to really kind of do what they needed to do. Uh, the skirmishers for the first infantry, however, are doing great. However, uh, they've gotten hit pretty hard. So I'm actually going to fold them back into their parent unit. And then whenever eighth um, recovers, I'm going to do the same. The main line of battle is advancing a little bit less evenly than I'd like. Um, but uh, we're still in largely elevated positions and the Confederate army does not, has not had a chance to um, recover from morale shock. So it's, that part of it's actually going okay and we're going to be able to establish, you know, sort of a dominant battlefield positions here pretty soon. This is also not <laughs> what I need. Second Lightfoot to be doing is, is standing immediately in front of a brigade and just eating it. Uh, to his credit, Lawson's unit really stuck it out a lot longer than I think anyone could have a reasonable expectation that he would. Alright, go hang out with the general for a bit. You're not getting your first star today, it doesn't sound like. Yeah, screw it. Go shoot at routing troops. That's, I mean, it seems like you get morale for hurting things too, so we'll close off their retreat. Over here. And like it, at this point, it really is just clean up. Like they're ne they're never gonna have a chance to do anything in terms of rallying or that sort of deal. I'm gonna shift these units leftward. And now it's uh. Now it's cleanup. I bet that I end up. They fight over here, probably, is my guess. Okay, so I'm taking uh, third and fifth over here because I want them to block. I don't want the Confederates to get out here and try and start running around. So I've got three and five kind of just blocking the formation. And, uh, you know, I think it, it might be too late for that, though, because I, I don't see they've got more units than this. Yeah, they've got I don't see all 6,000 currently on the field. So um, we'll see. Nope. Latimer, you don't get to play today. Okay. Hmm. It's a rough day to be there early. Okay. You're exhausted. There you go. That's what we'd like to see. Don't do this stupid shit where you fucking dance around like a bunch of dumbasses. No. All right. You're not running, you're not running. I gotta be careful about you with your your uh, thing, but I'd love to get a true volley into Latimer. 
And then let's do the thing with you. Flanked by what? No one's shooting at you. Flanked by what? Yep, that is part of what I was worried about. Okay. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think now we're just in cleanup. All right, there's a unit shattered. That's good. Uh, I mean, there's still plenty of Confederates to, to kill right now, so. Um, we got to figure out how to neutralize Lawson. Hold your damn ground. Also get better at reloading. Yeah, poor Latimer's unit. Oh my. No more cannons. Okay. So we can hit Lawton from a, num a number of sides. And I think it will mostly work out. Those guys are just going to have to hang out on the struggle bus while they deal with that. Okay, so I feel like the net, net mostly, mostly trapped around them. Lawton, hopefully we're hitting him from enough sides that he won't be a serious threat, but we'll see. This is, it's going to be resolved sooner or later. So, I, I mean, now it's just kind of letting the die fall. Yeah. He might be someone that I just have to let kind of go.
sooner or later I want to start thinking about trying to capture one or two of these units, but we'll see how that goes. Nice. All right, cool. Yeah, I mean, dude, get the do the thing. Don't shoot it. Nice. All right, cool. Get that money. Do 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 do. do. Much better. I mean, I'll keep going until the game tells me it's not it's not going to be a thing anymore. Um, but, I mean, you know, I'd, I'd say this went about as well as it probably could. I suppose I could have properly boxed the uh, army and I wouldn't be doing this right now. But, you know, hey, whatever. It, that isn't a problem. No, oh, there's nowhere else for me to go. All right. I think I had the same problem in uh, Malvern Hill. These guys are going to be getting all kinds of stamina. All right. More captures. More melee experience, as the case might be. No, oh, you're exhausted. Okay, that's fine. Whoa. Oh, that's right. It's uh, <laughs> it's on fast forward. I was like, how are they going so fast? Oh, God. All right. Yeah, that's, that's, these are the kind of casualties I, I see from <laughs> everybody else who's kicking my butt uh, <laughs> on YouTube. So 9, uh, 950, nothing else even came. So no guns, no cavalry, whatever. Uh, we got 16 guns. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. 6,000 kills, which is fantastic. I mean, just total destruction, obviously. Did the goals, units did the things. Very light casualties, which is wonderful. Uh, finally, promotions all over the place. Oh, that's fantastic. Just a bunch of colonels. Super great. Uh, what do we capture? Some Harbors Fairies. No wonder they're doing okay. Uh, the Sharps 55. I mean, I don't know. The more of these I capture, the more I can stand up random cav units or something. So I'm not complaining about it. And yeah, those were 12 pounders. Okay, cool. Only got two, though. That's rough. Um, recovered some of the thing. Recovered some other stuff. All right, cool. More Enfields. I'm never going to complain about capturing Enfields. I am ecstatic to capture Enfields. So that works out pretty well. So this was Kettle Run. Um, get the career point. Get the rep. Get the, a bunch of money and a bunch of soldiers just to prep the army for second bull run. If it's feasible, if it's practicable, I'd like to... Uh, bump the general line infantry. Oh, you did pick up a star. Bump the general line infantry to uh, 15. Or no, no, not 15. Uh, 1,300. I think is probably reasonable and certainly doable with these kind of cash, but we'll see. Uh, stamina speed, yep. Or reload time. No, they're not really for that. They're supposed to be go fast. All right, cool. Uh, let me take a look. Medicine's doing okay. Economy's all right. Army org. Uh, we probably want to get more army org three four five what does seven get me three four five but the units are bigger what does eight get me uh four four five but the units are the same size four core do i want three i just yeah no i do i need i need eventually anyway i need uh the ability to have a fourth core to have um ballast units because three core is going to become a fighting organization here in a second 
Yeah, uh, I'd like to start putting some points into economy, I think. Like, as much as politics might be useful, certainly to have the money wouldn't hurt. Um, medicine is certainly good. These are all good stats. Training, I'm okay leaving at zero for the time being. Politics would be nice just because it might be more money. But if I have economy, I don't know if I need it. Yeah, this is fine. Army org is okay. We're going to work... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can, the rest of the points for now are going to go into Econ. The next battle from Three Fair Gap will go into Econ. And then when I'm done, one more point in Economy gets up to seven. And we'll be leveling Econ, Medicine, and, and Army Org basically in unison until they're all at ten. At which point, I'll probably start putting points into politics just so that I've got the opportunity to build some of these units up. Um... If I have the money, I'll buy the rest of these officers. But I bought all the majors and all the light colonels I want. And... We'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm probably going to end up buying all these two, but we'll see. Uh, very light losses. Super happy with that. This is Kettle Run. So this is Fiasco. Uh, I hope you had a good time. I know I kind of got a little rambly there in the middle of the fight, but uh, for these smaller battles, I do feel like I can I can talk and play at the same time. It's just the grand battles that... You know, I really need to do the, the overdub, um, which this is. these are much easier to produce. There's a, I'll probably uh, accelerate the portions of the fight where I'm not talking, and then we're just going to go from there. So I hope you guys had a good time. I know I certainly did. Loving all this experience. Some of these units, oh, yeah. And finally, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to have to just lose all of it by bumping it up with uh, fresh recruits. So this is Fiasco. I had a good time. Hope you did too. Signing out.